You guys want to see my circus talent? Ooh, I'm double jointed in both thumbs. Can I join the circus now? The Greatest Showman. So The Greatest Showman is a musical about the success of P.T. Barnum. You know, of Barnum and Bailey's Animal Circus cookies that people used to carry around with boxes, you know, with the handles. Anyways, there's no Bailey in this movie, but it stars Hugh Jackman as Phineas Taylor Barnum. And he comes from humble beginnings, but he believes in talent. He believes in the odd side of humanity. You know, those rare gems like bearded ladies. And he wants to showcase these oddities to the world. And he meets various people along the way, and it comes with ups and downs, and now we have our short musical. I really mean that. I love musicals. I'm a big Hamilton fan. I love Wicked. I love the music man. I love a lot of musicals. And most of the great ones out there, most of the good musicals I know are well over two hours, two and a half hours long. This movie is an hour and 45 minutes. Right there when I saw the runtime, I was like, oh, it might not be as good as I hoped it would be. And it wasn't. This movie's not terrible. It's not completely just a bag of shit. There were things I liked and things I didn't like. What's good in this movie? The music. Yeah, the soundtrack is awesome. Right when the movie starts, it's that song you saw in the trailer. What? Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. That whole opening number, I was so into it. I was like, yeah, this is awesome. Hugh Jackman singing, the whole circus is performing. I'm totally into it. I was digging the vibe. And then the movie went on, introducing the characters and the setting and all that. Michelle Williams plays Charity, his wife. And I didn't know Michelle Williams could sing. And sometimes it looks like she's not the one singing. I'll say right now, the lip syncing in this entire movie is really bad. Usually if the lip syncing is okay in a movie musical, I'll let it go. But when it's this bad, I can't help but notice. It just seemed really fake. This was obviously recorded in a studio. It doesn't even look like much effort was put into making it look real. That was kind of a bummer. One character in particular, Rebecca Ferguson's character, Jenny Lynn, she plays this famous opera singer, although she doesn't sing opera like in the movie. My aunt is an opera singer. I know what opera sounds like. She wasn't singing opera, but actually her singing voice was done by someone else entirely. And I could really tell they don't sound alike at all. And again, the lip syncing was not good. And then there's Zac Efron. I'll say I really liked him in this movie. First of all, to see him singing and dancing again, I haven't seen him sing and dance since like high school musical 10 years ago. What? I watched it when it originally aired on Disney Channel. Shut up. But Zac Efron still got talent. And I really liked his chemistry with Hugh Jackman. It was like Hugh Jackman was like, all right, young rook, I'll show you the ropes. Although I wouldn't call Zac Efron a rookie, but Hugh Jackman with his vast musical background and Zac Efron with his musical background. Point is, I really liked their chemistry on screen. But then there's Zac Efron's story with Zendaya. Oh, this brought the movie down. I really love Zendaya as an actress and a performer. She's gorgeous. She's sexy. She's talented. She's smart. She's the whole package. I'm really attracted to Zendaya. But watching this movie, I was like, why is she in there at all? She plays this trapeze artist who kind of has a love story with Zac Efron. I was like, any scene with those two was bringing the entire movie down. It was just unnecessary, I felt. In a movie that is about a circus being formed and, you know, accepting who you are if you're, like, not normal. You know, loving your own uniqueness, no matter how odd it may seem to the rest of the world. Throwing this weird romance into the story with two really good-looking people just felt out of place. They had this whole musical number with each other that's like their love ballad song. And during that whole scene, I was like, Oh no. That to me was the worst part of the movie. And like I said, this is probably the shortest musical I've ever seen, being an hour and 45 minutes where most good musicals I know are at least two and a half hours long. So yeah, this movie felt rushed quite a few times. Rushed, rushed, rushed. That's such a common problem these days in movies. This film could have benefited from being at least half an hour longer, at least. Especially with it being a musical. Again, I like the songs in the movie, they're really well done. I mean, they sound good anyways. It's a good soundtrack, I'm probably gonna listen to it again. But I feel like at least like the first half of this film just went a little too fast. It didn't really slow down at all, like most good musical movies do. Like Les Mis, for example, came out in 2012. That's a two hour and 45 minute movie and it was awesome. Or I thought so anyways. I feel like Les Mis set the standard for what most movie musicals should be these days. The Greatest Showman was nowhere near as good as Les Mis. But like I said, this film's not completely bad. You know, the movie looked really good. I love the setting and I love the costumes and the wardrobe, the lighting, the color scheme, and when the circus is doing its thing, it's awesome. The song called This Is Me, that's when the bearded lady takes over and is like, yeah, we are freaks and we're gonna own it. So let's just go out there and show them how freaky we are. That scene, I loved it. I'll say The Greatest Showman had its moments. When it totally owned that circus vibe with the cool music and the performing and the choreography, I was totally into it. I was loving it. I was tapping my foot. I was dancing along in my seat. But then it brought on the unnecessary romance between Zac Efron and Zendaya that totally bogged down the movie. The movie could have taken its time more, slowed down a little bit, maybe given us some more character depth with P.T. Barnum's wife, and the lip syncing could have been a lot better. I'm sorry, that seems like a nitpick, but it really bothered me. So for The Greatest Showman, I will say, wait until this movie's 
at a discount theater, then go see it. So The Greatest Showman, have you seen it? What did you think about it? And what is your favorite musical of all time for all you musical fans out there? Whatever it is, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.